Now I'm going to show you how to attach two pinch pots together to make the hollow body of your animal. First you want to make sure that your two pinch pots are a good fit for each other. One of mine is a little bit bigger so I'm going to roll it against the table and support it to make the outside edge a little bit smaller so it matches with my other pinch pot. Notice that my second pinch pot is more like half of an egg. I wanted that shape to the body of my creature so I made sure to extend my pinch pot at the bottom so I could get that overall body shape. So the first big step in attaching two pieces of clay together is to score your clay. Scoring means to scratch. You can use the needle tool or the knife tool and you want to really rough up the edges of your clay. You don't want to make a pretty pattern, but you want to make a giant mess of the edge so it's very rough and it will adhere well to your other piece of clay. You need to score both surfaces that you're attaching together, so go ahead and score or scratch your other pinch pot's edge as well. Now you're going to slip. Usually slip refers to a mixture of clay and water that ceramic artists use, but we're just going to use plain water. Dip your finger in the water and dab it onto the edge of your clay so that the water comes off your finger and sits in the grooves you cut. You always want to use your finger to add water. Never dip your clay into the water bowl. It will be too much water and you will have mud. Now you're ready to attach the two pieces together. You can squish them together, but that's not good enough. The final step is to smooth the seam. You need to go back with your fingers, support the entire sphere that you've created, but push the clay across the seam so that the two pieces become one. Turn the two pinch pots in your hand and continue smoothing the seam. The air bubble that you've trapped inside will actually help support the structure that you created. So you don't want to pop this air bubble or let the air out or it'll collapse like a popped balloon. Once you're done smoothing, you can actually shape your clay by rolling it gently against the table. With that air bubble inside to support it, it should be just fine. But obviously you don't want to press too hard or you could poke right through the wall of your clay. Now I'm going to show you how to attach something else to your clay body. This could be an arm a leg, a neck, a head, but I'm going to make a tail because my creature is going to be a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So same as before, you want to pull off the appropriate amount sized piece of clay and then wrap up the rest of your clay so it doesn't dry out. Shape whatever it is you're trying to create in your hands. You should know exactly what shape or form you're going for before you get your clay out of the plastic. The longer you hold it in your hands and play with it, the more the heat from your hands will dry out your clay and make it very difficult to work with. You will not get new fresh clay if you dry yours up into little rocks. Remember your clay rules. Your clay should always be about as thick as a finger. The base of my tail is quite a bit thicker and the tip is thinner. This is going to cause uneven drying. I am at a very strong risk for having breakage in my project. So I'm going to try to thin out the base of my tail and thicken up the tip so that I don't run into problems. First I should figure out where I'm going to place my tail. Then once again, score both surfaces or scratch both surfaces with the needle tool or the knife tool. Step number two is to slip or add water to both surfaces to fill in those little grooves. Step number three is of course to smooth it together. Make sure you get all the way around the piece that you're smoothing on. So examine your creature that you're building from every possible angle. Pick it up, turn it over, look from the left and look from the right to make sure that your two pieces of clay are formed into one piece. The final step of your project involves the most important thing you need to know about clay. Air bubbles cannot be trapped when the clay goes into the kiln or it will cause an explosion. It sounds funny, but it ruins your project. You won't have time to remake ruined projects 
and you won't be very well appreciated by your classmates when their items are ruined as well. I'm going to rupture the air bubble trapped between my two pinch pots while my clay is still wet so that you can see the process, but you should wait until you're done shaping your entire creature and then use your needle tool to poke a hole in some place that won't be noticed, generally the underneath of your project. A second hole is also good just to make sure you poked into that air pocket and there's a space for it to release when it's heating up in the kiln. You should now have all the information you need to make a very successful clay creature.